I started off sunny, nice and warm. What started as a clear day turned to darkness at 8.46 the morning of September 11, 2001. I remember hearing the radio transmission come over, the plane hit the building. I'm like, what are you talking about? New York police and firefighters raced to ground zero when two planes hit the Twin Towers. I took a photo of part of the engine of the plane one of the tires on my route going towards Ground Zero. I've never seen those photos. Yeah, nobody, you don't see them anywhere. Nobody's ever seen those photos. These retired NYPD officers had different roles that day. Ron Pastrana, I was a sergeant with the New York City Police Department. Gus Kabarkas, New York City Police Sergeant. Detective Robert Boltania, retired NYPD. Chris Meyer, police officer, New York City Police Department, retired. None of them knew each other, but tragedy united them. Yeah, it's definitely a Something that brings us all together, that's for sure. They now all live in North Texas, and 20 years after 9-11... A friend of mine who was a, he was a police officer, he took pictures that day. They sat down to talk to us and share pictures... Have you seen these before? ...taken at Ground Zero. What did you see when you first walk up? I've described it to people as uh, kind of like being in a snowstorm, because there was just all this dust and particles flying around. Chris Meyer arrived at Ground Zero after the second tower had fallen jet fuel burning, he had concrete burning, you name it, all the different office supply, everything was just on fire. One of his most vivid memories is the fire truck he found buried in the rubble. We found the door of a fire truck and, um, and then we started locating the remains there. Um, I mean, that was just a, a shot in the gut. Lieutenant Rolando Pastrana says the most heart-wrenching moment for him came when he heard Officer Maury Smith over the police scanner. And I just remember her screaming over the radio, 1013, I'm stuck, I can't get out, I'm stuck. She was trapped when the second tower fell. She's like, I'm in a building, I'm in a building, but you didn't know where to begin. And then the transmission just stopped. Sergeant Gus Kabarkas led a team of officers in search of survivors. Basically, on our heads and knees. Every day, he says they sifted through the debris, looking for remains. If it was personal property, you put it in one bucket. If it was human remains, you would take those buckets, you would turn all that stuff in. After those shifts, they had to walk past family members, holding up posters of their missing loved ones. They come up to you, they ask, hey, have you seen my son? Have you seen my husband? And we knew that there was no one alive down there. 20, uh, 23, I mean. 23 NYPD officers died that day. Crazy. The department says that more than 1,500 have died from illnesses like cancer and lung damage. Haunting. From what they inhaled. I get asthma, I got scarred lungs, sleep apnea. It's always on the back of my mind. Heard many a times, it's not a matter of if, but when. So, we'll see. And it doesn't stop at the physical scarring. There was a point, you know, it was really bad for me. You just keep stuffing it down and everything's great. Everything's fine, nothing to worry about. It just overwhelms you after a while. Reach out for help, get it. Um. Officer Meyer says he suffers from PTSD and has struggled with depression. Reach out for help, because it's there. People will help you and you'll make it through that darkness and come out the other side. But now they gather every year. It's a time to remember. Along with dozens of other former NYPD officers. But we have that unique bond. To remember. We're very fortunate that we're still here. And no matter what happens in life. In McKinney. You can never take away the title New York City Police Officer. I'm Rebecca Lopez.